now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 448, 4, the 484th episode of the Puckle Podcast. Too many of them, you get tongue-tied. And I'm here today with my spicy co-host. We've got the one and only Dr. Shamu. Hello, hello. And we've got uh, the wonderful, as always, Seth Vilo. Hello, hello. Call me Poblano Pepper. Poblano? What? <laughs> it's the it's the first pepper. one I could think of, and I only thought of it because I have one in my fridge right now I need to use before it goes bad. Well, welcome to the Puckle Podcast, the Pepper Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007, not 2004. Wow, I'm just making things up right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a day. We're the podcast that talks about everything Pokemon from the video and game peppers. to the trading card game uh, to all the peppers in between. And uh, we're here, <laughs> we're here to bring you an exciting show today. Uh, this is already starting off wonderfully. <laughs> so you guys been up to anything fun recently i talk to you guys all the time but uh <laughs> but anything that you didn't tell me about happened oh i don't know yeah that's fair okay not really like uh <laughs> yeah me me i'm gardening which is awesome so I fell for, like, the largest Ponzi scheme in the world a couple weeks ago, and I nice. don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad. Uh, Ponzi scheme's the wrong word. This is a business model that I really want to get in on because it's very good and very easy, and the profit margins must be ginormous. So uh-huh. uh, so you know how there's, like, a global pandemic going on outside? Oh, there... Oh. Yeah, oh, I don't know yeah. if you've noticed. I don't know if you've noticed, but... Oh, yeah. And you're not, like, supposed to see other people and stuff like that. So one of the things that helps me get into shape, like, I just like to... Running just seems very straightforward. It makes sense in my mind. Calories out versus calories in type deal, right? Wicked. That's what I always think. And so I always used to... I would sign up for, like, a race, you know, and be like, oh, I need to run four miles by, like, this date and be able to do it comfortably, right? And so that would be my motivation to, like, go out and work out and stuff like that. And so obviously those are gone, or at least decreased drastically in scale because of... Again, global pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so they came up with this thing uh, that is very interesting and a very good business model and definitely a waste of money. But they have this thing where you can sign up for quote unquote virtual races. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm already uh, getting sick. You probably get Facebook ads for these. Um, no, I don't. Facebook knows better. I do. <laughs> I get Facebook. Wait, you think? Wait, wait, you use Facebook? I use it to see what my uh, what my older uh, relatives are yelling into the into the void. Yeah, see, I just let them yell into the void and not worry about it. I get memes. I I get reposted Reddit memes on mine. Yeah, <laughs> in case I missed them the first time, I could see them again. <laughs> exactly. Um, so there's this thing you sign up for it. I paid I paid far more money than I should have, but uh, to quote unquote run up Mount Fuji. The idea is you give these people X amount of dollars and they say, hey, you need to run this many miles on your own in, amount, in an amount of time that you want to give yourself. So like you give yourself a couple of weeks or something because the, the whole track was like 46 miles or something. And Thatch is not in good enough shape to run over a marathon in a day. And the idea is when you're done, they'll send you a medal because you're like, yay, I finished. Yeah. And they have like a little app so you can like track your progress and for every 20% of the race you run, they plant a tree. That's nice. It makes up for me using my treadmill mm-hmm. to run the race. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, it was a neat experience. I finished it today, this morning. I finished my run up Mount Fuji, but then they send you the medal at the end. And so all you need to do is develop an app and then just like make medals and then send them to people. And then you just profit. And it, it, they only send you the medal if you finish, by the way. So, like, people could just give uh, you money and forget about it. Clever. Very clever. Make them run. So you don't even send them the $5 medal that you have. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's absolutely, I mean, I'm, you know what's worse is, like, because I finished this one, I'm going to go sign up for another one because it keeps me motivated. <laughs> I'm very glad you found something that you enjoy. 
<laughs> Thanks, Seth. I would rather jump off the tallest building in Atlanta and get my workout that way. So, so my personal opinion about working out is people don't hate working out. They hate starting working out. And during it and after. Well, when you start working out, like when you start working, no, I mean like in general, like if you spend like a day yeah. working out, like, oh, I just went for my, my first run and you go, that sucked. And it's like, yeah, it did because you haven't run. Yeah. But after you get to the point, I, I don't know, like I've gotten to the point with my running where I go for like times now, you know what I mean? Like I try to, I try to like do better on time. I'm not trying to run farther and farther and farther. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. once you do that, you're just like. You just feel good because when you work out, you get like a dopamine hit. Yeah, I know that brain chemistry. Blah. So you get that dopamine hit and you're just like, yeah, I feel good. And so I already said this in the discord this morning. I was yelling at Mark about this. So this is going to sound very <laughs> redundant to anybody on the discord, but <laughs> this could, the same conversation. I like I, I mean, I feel the same way. Like if I don't run for like three months or something like that. When I start, I'm like, man, this is awful. I don't want, I don't understand why people do this. <laughs> Even though like three months yeah. before I was like running five, six miles for fun, you know, I also just do it to lose weight because I've been trying to lose weight like all my life. I've always been heavier and I want to try to, mm -hmm. uh, I want to try to like be quote unquote in shape, whatever that means. Whatever that is. Welcome to the physical under, under education <laughs> underground. Champions yeah. League. The PE, the PE uckle. Pay you, pay you, pay you, pay you, pay you, pay you, pay pay you, pay pay you, 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 pay that's apparently an upcoming anime episode. I'm on Serapy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> There's a picture of a Grookey riding a Dodrio, and it's I really I thought you were making some weird running tie-in. Just like, what are you doing? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, oh, there's gosh. a Grookey riding a Dodrio on Serapy. Yeah, that, yeah th that's how you work out. You ride your Dodrio, and... Yeah. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of running, what about this Grookey <laughs> riding this <laughs> Dodrio? <laughs> It can grassy glide, so it's clearly very fast. You see, I, I wanted. Know. I wonder how grassy glide works. Like, what's the mechanics there? Like, or maybe not the mechanics. Like, what's the physics of grassy glide? I was about to make a book reference that only Linian would get. So, oh, are you talking about it from uh from that one book? Yeah, that oh, one book, Edge Dancer. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. King, whatever, oh, you do? Cool. Yeah. Welcome to the cult. That's I know. I've got edge the dancing. books. I've got the books. I didn't know how far you got. She's later. God, Seth, I'm in, I'm insulted. I know. Figured you were too busy running. Yeah, I'm too busy. You know, when I run, I listen to audiobooks. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. You, like, it's a 45-minute run, so that's 45 minutes of an audiobook, you know? There you go. All righty. So, what, like, four pages? Depending on the book size. Yes. <laughs> if if your book is a tablet that's about 20 feet tall, uh, written in 10 feet, 10 point the font. The dog was big and red. <laughs> that's just clifford um all right <laughs> all right well without further ado then let's kick it on over to the news so let's cue that epic music <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, there are a few things to talk about this week. Uh, not as much. It's been a kind of a slow news week this week. Uh, to be fair, we did get like massive Pokemon dump a couple of weeks ago. So take everything with a grain of salt, I guess. This is my favorite piece of news that came out this week was that TPCI is hosting another Pokemon Team Challenge competition where you go to your local game store. What? You can put together a team for a TCG online competition. What? What? <laughs> Registration begins what? March 26th and qualifiers, qualifiers begin on April 3rd. Bracket matches what? will begin in late June. So this is a really cool idea, but at the wrong time. Why do I have to go to my game store for a TCG online thing? Yeah, we heard there's a pandemic outside and it's really good to do things online. So why don't you go to your local game store wait and a do minute, things wait online? Wait a minute. Is this where you go to your local game store or the thing that they've been doing where it's like each game store is a representative and you are on basically the whatever the name of your store is team? 
I imagine that's what it's supposed to be. Well, yeah. no, I think that's what it is because I think we have someone in our Discord on it. I just saw something oh, really? like yesterday. Yeah. I'm in two of them. I haven't ever done anything, but... I'm very interested because I think it's it's kind of like that Hearthstone idea. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, they, I know they uh they got a round one by. It's the only reason I know because they just posted it. And it's like, oh, okay. who is it? I want to oh, go yeah. talk to them. I want to learn more about this. They're in the TCG this. chat. Uh oh, it is uh Miko Y. Okay, we're gonna talk to you and figure out how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably do it this time now that I'm gonna be not busy. Ooh, not busy, Seth. Are you not busy? You want to come over for breakfast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Let me just hop on a plane. Yeah, I'm telling you. D this is very exciting, though. Yeah. I like the idea of playing in tournaments and in competitive play. I hope more opportunities like this continue. Yeah. As long as you don't have to meet in person, I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is my answer. As long as you don't have to meet in person, it's pretty cool. I just, I don't want them going to actual physical local game stores unless they absolutely have to. Yep. This has been a PSA by Thatch. This may make me actually buy cards now. Ooh. Ooh, uh, all right, so who wants to, uh, go on, who wants to be the color red today? Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news. For the first time in Pokemon's 24-year history in the anime, Ash has obtained exactly zero of the starters for the Galar region, or any region that he was a part of. Go, his partner, now has all three of the Galar starters, meaning there's none left for Ash. Ha ha ha. I'm really okay with that, on a lot of levels. Some people think this is a sign Ash is going to be taken out of the anime. I believe they're insane. Yeah, you're absolutely... Seth, we agree on something, and this is that means it's right. Uh, <laughs> that means it's right. Yeah, Ash being kicked yeah. out of the anime is such a dumb idea. You can't just... Like, that's like saying Homer Simpson, Simpson is no longer going to be in The Simpsons. Right. You can't do that. No. No, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to highlight two different parts of the Pokemon franchise mm -hmm. in two different characters. They used to use Ash for both of them, where it's like, oh, catching, and he was really bad at that part. But but it's just like, hey, we were using him for promotion, and now they're kind of just using Ash as like, let's make Ash the cool trainer that he's always wanted to be, or people have always wanted him to be. Mm -hmm. Make him be, make him more focused on the battling, and make go yeah. like, like focus on catching. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. They, said, they tried to make Ash do both, and it just never they never did it. They only had him do one. The only time he caught more than like he caught the most Pokemon in like Gen One and then Gen Five. Yeah. And Gen 5 was like, what, 10, I think? It was not that many. He caught still. 10. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was 10. 10 is exactly Maybe. right. It's like, so it's like, just let someone else be catching a lot mm -hmm. of them. So someone's actually catching Pokemon. Like, I like it a lot. They, I think they, they, they try to kind of like spread it out through like the whole like group when they did it before. Like, oh, y'all, mm -hmm. Misty catching some, Brock catching some too. But like, they never really caught a lot. And like, they always like caught up to their party size. They never mm -hmm. caught more, really. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know if Goes actually got a full. I don't even know if Go's got a party, actually. I want to know. He'll just, like, carry with him whatever he wants. Now that he has the starters, like, those starters will always be there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. because I don't, because at one point, I was, like, it, looking at Therapy, too, like, they have their current rosters, like, there. Mm-hmm. Oh, he just like, rotates he so Slicer. much. He does, but he had Scyther on there for a solid bit, and then it was gone. That's why I was wondering mm -hmm. if they I think that was, like, one of the first know. ones he caught, so they it kept was, it there yeah, for a little probably. while, and then probably. they realized he was just going to catch everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it's I think it's a really interesting concept and it reminds me more of the manga in that regard. Because yeah. in the manga you have um Red going around and catching everything. He only, he has six Pokemon that he uses, but he catches everything. And mm -hmm. they have moments for that. It's it's really interesting. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's really cool. I haven't watched the new episodes yet of the anime. I need to do that. I need to do that. Because I, I think this batch is supposed to be better than the last batch. The last batch was really, really bad. <laughs> in my personal opinion. But mm -hmm. this one's got like all of the exciting things. So, let's move on to this next one about Pokemon Unite, Shamu. Uh, the Unite beta is wrapping up in Canada, so, but we don't really have any idea if there's gonna be one in the US. Most like, honestly, we're kinda talking about it a little bit earlier, like, most likely they're just gonna release it for us. I, yeah. Oh yeah, we're not gonna get beta. at a point where they don't care, and they're just like, hey, you can just leak everything, cause no one in the US is actually gonna not release photos. Absolutely. I, I think if you look at like, the population as well, the population's so much larger than Canada here. So yeah, like, yep. if you release the beta in the US, it's just like you'd have to do it to like if you did it, you'd have to put like an embargo on it and like do it mm -hmm. to like YouTubers or people who have something to lose. Like you can't you can't just say, oh, public beta, you know, you, at least not here because I yeah. also think yes. that if it's wrapping up in Canada, that means that we're pretty close to the launch anyway, because they, they went into Probably. China first because it's Tencent. 
Yeah. But then they moved it to Canada to kind of get the like the Western beta idea going. Mm -hmm. And like doing a beta in Canada is just like prepping it for the US, right? Like we I I know no offense to our Canadian listeners, but you are our hat. And they're just like there are fewer people there and the culture is very similar to America. So I, I imagine this means that the release is coming very soon. It's almost been a year since they've announced it anyway. Like they announced it back in June. Did they really? Oh yeah. My gosh. Yeah, it's been a while. We had this with release with like Pokemon Snap. Yeah. Wow. It's been nine months since we've heard we've heard about Pokemon Unite. And I, I wouldn't be surprised that if that means it's coming out soon. Maybe it'll bundle with sleep. It will not. Man, everybody keeps talking about where's Pokemon Sleep? Where's Detective Pikachu 2? That press conference, as far as I, I'm concerned, was a shared fever dream. <laughs> because all of that stuff isn't coming out and probably shouldn't come out. Let's be completely honest. Like I think Sleep might not just be coming out at this point. Pokemon, yeah. Like, Detective Pikachu 2 is probably just still in the works or been halted so much that they just don't want to release anything until they have a, yeah. find, like, a good date. I I imagine they because there is plan there are plans for a sequel to Detective Pikachu two yeah but I don't know where it is in production and I'm sure they want the game and the movie release to somewhat coincide probably mm. they want to have a full hype train again like they do yeah. with Pikachu one like that's the same they're not gonna like I don't see them doing any sort of hype building until they have it mm-hmm. pretty much done yeah yeah absolutely like, on both sides because they don't want to. You don't want to have something where, like, we're building the type and we're trying to finish it, and then it gets rushed, you know? I agree like, with you. Let the, just let them have their time to make it whatever they want it to be, good or so, not. Yeah, I, I absolutely <laughs> agree. Uh, next up is video game battling news. There you have a new competition coming out, and it's at least one that's, like, got a flavor. It's better than other ones, um, where it's just like, just play whatever format's going on right now. This one is called the Spike Muth Cup. It restricts. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, it restricts legends. So like, you can't do the restricted legends like we are currently in BSS and stuff like that. But you are not able to Dynamax at all while you're playing, which is amazing. Registration is open from March 18th to uh, uh or is open until March 18th, and the competition starts on March 19th through the 21st. So that's very exciting. I I think it's cool. I like these little formats. The ones I really miss are just like, oh, you can only use Pokemon that are like red, green, and purple. I miss those because they would make fun metas. But this one's going to be at least interesting and no Dynamax, which has kind of been, I would say, a staple, especially in BSS. So I'm excited to see how that one goes. But Seth, tell us about Pokemon Go. Yeah. Yee. Pokemon Go. There's a Charge Up event, which has been announced and will go through March 16th through March 22nd. So you've got a period of like six days in there. A week, I guess. In this, various electric type Pokemon, such as Tynamo and Mega Manectric, are going to be added to the game. They're not in there, I guess. I don't know. Has Tynamo? No. I don't know. No, no. They, no, they've literally, they're still adding in Gen 5 yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, Gen 5. They're still like, adding in what? Gen 5 Pokemon. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, um, also various electric Pokemon will hatch from 5k eggs. Various 1 and 3 star raids will also include electrics. Tynamo, for instance, can be found in 1 star raids. And to keep going with the thunder, 5 star raids will be thunderous Therian form. And there's going to be some kind of special research for the event that we don't know too much about right now. Uh, it'll probably just, like, catch electric Pokemon, catch yeah. a Tynamo. Or it'll probably get you Tynamo too. They like yeah. to do that with some of those, not like, mm-hmm. oh... Here's this event focused on, like, this type and the, or this Pokemon, like, here, we'll give you a yeah. bunch of, like, research with that. We'll get you this Pokemon at least. So as long as you uh-huh. catch electric type, you're good. Yeah, they do that a lot. I might start playing Pokemon Go again now that's warming up. I, I play it here and there. Like, from the fact that I can actually play it at home or, like, I have enough yeah. sense that I can just do it. It's, like, I'll do yeah. a few of them if it's like, oh, here's a shiny Pokemon that I like. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll play that. Mm-hmm. I don't like playing it unless I can walk outside. I'm kind of the opposite. I don't want to leave. Like, I, I get that. I would that. be playing it more if I could actually get, like, actual spawns from my house other than doing a, uh... Incense. Right? Incense, that would be yeah. great. You know? For me, it's mostly, like, it, I, my thought is, if I'm playing Pokemon Go on my phone at home, I'm like, I could be playing, like, a real video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of where well, I'm at. My, my thing is more of an idle thing. Like, I'll just have yeah, to doing something else. Like, I, that's what I prefer with a lot of my stuff, is just having something on the side. I will admit, having it running somewhere at, like, Disney World is about the best thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have a ticket burning a hole in my pocket I've got to use by September, so I'm going to catch them all in Florida at some time by the end of this year. <laughs> You're going to catch a lot of something else in Florida, too. Uh, Hopefully not by then. That's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Shamu, last thing about Pokemon Go that happened. 
Uh, they're also trying to implement a nice, like, quality of life feature where you can actually, like, see what Pokemon might hatch out of your eggs. So, for example, with the egg event, you get, like, at the various electric-type Pokemon, you have, you have, like, five eggs and you don't know which is which. You can look, click an egg and see, oh, there's a bunch of electric Pokemon, this must have been from the electric event, etc., cetera, et cetera. Cool. So, if you have a bunch of, like, old mm-hmm. eggs from events and stuff, you and you have no idea what's gonna hatch, you're like, oh, that can hatch that. Let me try to hatch that one first, and then move on, or whatever, you know? Like, How funky! Cool! Before you're just like, hey, Niantic's doing this because they're being a good overlord. Um, the EU recently passed laws about gotcha games. Uh-huh. That's why. <laughs> and that's yeah, why it's there. Loot box. <laughs> that's why it's there. <laughs> yep. You can't uh, you can't loot box in Europe anymore. You can't have a blind loot box, I guess. You have to have the odds or whatever. Yeah. Well they don't even give you the odds, right? Not the odds, but like the what you could get is what I mean. I like I guess I guess that's a gotcha, but like you don't buy eggs. No, no. Do yeah. you do buy incubators though, so you can hatch uh-huh. more eggs? I guess, yeah. That's guess, kinda yeah. how they get like, around it. I yeah. I I can see it, but at the same time it's like I think that they're being safe, it's fine. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's cool though. Regardless, it's yeah. cool. Yeah, I'd much is. rather have that than not that. I, I don't know. I, the only thing I wish we would have instead is the ability to, like, throw out eggs if you right. got full, right? And there's, like, an, an yeah, event happening. That, like would that. Be, that would be nice. If I could just have some scrambled eggs or something. Incorporate instead. Pokemon just, cooking. There you go. Oh, no. no I don't want this egg. Oh, Let me no. Real quick. This is going somewhere south real quick. You get, like, five candies from it. So in Puckle News, we've got a couple things. First being that we've got, uh, we've got a new Nuzlocke happening on YouTube starting not this week, but next week. Um, we're going to kick things off. If you're a patron, please watch out on patreon.com. We're going to be putting up polls so you can choose what Pokemon we start with and what we name our rival on Patreon. It'll be a, uh, it'll be a fun time. Uh, we also, of course, have Twitch going as well. We still have the Twitch Nuzlocke on Tuesdays with myself. Uh, so be sure to check that out. We're to playing platinum and we're having a good time. All right. But with that, I think that's the news. We're going to go ahead. And we're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-host will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz Trivia. Thank you to... Mark from the Dunsparce gang for giving us that wonderful intro read. Uh, he just had a kid. Fun fact. So, yay, being Woo. a dad, Mark. All right, moving on, though. We're going to go ahead and get into some trivia. Our first trivia question this week is going to be from... Bam! Ouch. Uh, oh, my ears. Yep, I did that on purpose. I have to disorient you. That's part of the, that's part of the game show now. All right, he says, Torterra will be coming back to the games with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Did you know that Torterra is the heaviest final stage starter at 310 kilograms? If Torterra is the heaviest, then I want to know which final starter stage is the lightest. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I doubt, I doubt it's not anything in Gen 1 is not light. Not like, Gen 1, not Gen 2. I feel not... like it might be Gen 7, but like, what else is... Because Gen 7's got Inteleon and Cinderace, which I don't think would be heavy, but... I don't know what else there is at the moment. There's Sceptile that's possible, but it's got a whole a whole tree on its butt. There's yeah. Decidueye that's possible. Yeah, it's not about Decidueye because it's a ghost. Uh, I don't know if that'll affect the weight or not. Gen 4, no. Infernape is possible. Five. Yeah. Nothing from superior. 5. No, it's a period would be too heavy, I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's a whole 13-foot snake or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I would say possibly like Cinderace, Inteleon, Decidueye. Greninja would be probably one too. Tongue weight, though. Tongue. That was so I, think we've got, I didn't expect to, to say. Four at least, I think. Tongues with... are pretty dense, right? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to go in Teleon, honestly. I think it's... I kind of agree with you, honestly. Like, I, I think just via shape and, like, size, like, it... Again, it looks at least like... we narrowed it down to... F- it's, it's a 50-25% chance, essentially, yeah. at this point. Yeah. I could, like... I dig it. Teleon makes the most sense. Let's do it. Inteleon is unfortunately incorrect. Darn Inteleon it. weighs 99.6 pounds... 
However, the lightest is actually Cinderace Damn at 72.8 really? pounds. Yep. Uh, followed up by Decidueye at 36.6 pound, uh, kilograms or 87.7 pounds. I was about pounds. to say, what? And then Delphox at 86 pounds. We never have done like a 25, 20% chance type thing. Yep. It's fine. I, f- I still yep. feel good with our answer. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, second is better than not. So, hey, we'll take yeah, it. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll take it. You did, you did pretty good. You did okay. You you yeah. thought you named all of the lightest ones when you were talking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll give you credit in your hearts. Thank you. So that I don't have point. points. No, no, no. I don't deal at half points. We did that once. <laughs> half, I'm not doing that again. Point. At the half point. Nope. It's happened. It's in stone. Uh, I, get a half nope, point in our I am That's not. Decreed. I am not going to be nice to you today. Uh, all right. This next one is going to be from Shark Finnegan. What is the last mainline game to not add a new Pokemon or new form into the game? That's actually a good question. I like this question. Wait, uh, uh, what, what, what mainline game did not add a new Pokemon or a new form for a Pokemon? Technically, Let's Go Pikachu Eevee didn't add anything. Melmetal already existed. Unova? What? Would it be so black and white? Would it be black and white? That, that, that? No, no. So they, like, it, it, new generations count as new Pokemon, right? Oh. Oh. And... Like, the DLC packs both added stuff, Urshifu and Calyrex. What did Fire Red and Leaf Green add? Speedform Deoxys. That was Emerald, I thought. Uh, maybe, actually. Um, I thought that was an introduction with Emerald. But again, it was in that same kind of core of Gen 3 stuff, so I don't know, maybe it was those games. But, like, I don't... Uh, did you say latest it's... Thatch? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, what was the last mainline game to the not add a new Pokemon game. or a new form? Oh, so... So can we think of anything other than Let's Go Pikachu Eevee? Oh, wait, no, they added new forms, the starters, if that technically counts. The the starter Pikachu and starter Eevee, their oh. forms. They have different stats. Yeah. Um, crumbs. So <sighs> nothing past Let's Go Eevee Pikachu, I don't think. There's only, because like, a handful what? of games past that anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Before that, Black and White 2, Kyurem. Yeah, yeah, no. Kyurem. Uh, X and Y added new Pokemon, HeartGold, Soul Silver. Um... What did that add? Did that add anything? When did we have exclamation and question mark unknown? Oh, that platinum I thought. Okay, yeah, I think it well, was maybe platinum. It was that too. Okay, I don't think it was actually. It was actually like I don't think it was actually hard gold soul silver. They came out and. No, I didn't think so either. I feel like that was like a Gen Cause... Four thing, just being like, "Aha, you can also have these new alphabet letters." Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, what did Gen Five remake? They did uh. Well, black and white isn't. Uh, there was no remake in Gen Five, was there? There's black and white too, but those had to cure them. And then black and white had new actual new Pokemon. Yeah, I think our gold soul silver and like like unless the unknown thing is actually them, but I I, I don't think platinum. it is. No, I'm I've already sure seen it in the platinum guide. I think it's even like Diamond Pearl. Like I th- I don't I don't I think they're Diamond there. Pearl had a new Pokemon altogether. No, no, no. I mean like for the unknown. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, um, I, think Gold, I can't think of anything else than Heart Gold Soul Silver. Or that's for sure isn't because of the yeah, Pikachu Megas stuff. Yeah, Megas too. So well, Mega I'm gonna need Pikachu's. an answer. Heart Gold Soul Silver, I guess. Yep. I can't. Like, again, Let's I do can't it. think of anything else. Heart at this Gold point. Soul Silver. Heart Gold Soul Silver is technically not correct, but I'll give you the point. Okay. The only because the only reason Heart Gold Soul Silver doesn't count is because of the stupid spiky eared Pichu that was an event oh. only type oh, thing. Oh yeah. Okay. But I I'll give it to you. the The actual answer is actually Crystal version. What? Yeah, Crystal was the last game to not introduce anything new. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Ruby and Sapphire obviously did new Pokemon. Leaf Green, yeah. Fire Red introduced both attack and defense form Deoxys. As oh, and well, Emerald was speed. As well as your two unknown forms that you keep talking about. That's actually where oh. they came in, was Leaf Green, Fire uh, Red. Okay. And then uh, Emerald obviously had speed form Deoxys, like you discussed. Diamond and Pearl, new Pokemon, Platinum, Giratina Origin form, yep. Shaman, Sky form. Heart Gold Soul Silver had Spiky Eared Pichu, whatever. Um, it can't transfer. Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> um, and then Black White, new Pokemon, Black White 2, Kirim forms, XY is XY, Orez has a ton of new Pokemon forms. And then you've got Gen 7, uh, and then Gen 7 Part 2, the Electric Boogaloo, with just the same <laughs> yeah. game, but more Pokemon, I guess. And yep. UBs. Yeah, you got everything else right from there, though. Yeah, like, it, it, it's, yeah. It's literally crystal version. Everything's added something. The let's go almost got us. Every it's yeah. everything's like added almost something. It's really dumb. But yeah, I'll give you the point because Spiky your Peachy is dumb. Don't worry, the answer will change in November. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, uh, we'll talk about it. 
All right. So this next question is your Pokedex entry question, as always. This one is from Chaoxic. Chaoxic. Never played that game. It's Pokemon Y Dex entry reads, if it has sunshine and water, it doesn't need to eat because it can generate energy from the leaves on its back. Who's that Pokemon? Well, grass type can be assumed. Yeah. Leaves on its back? That throws me off. What Pokemon has leaves on its back? Go-Go. Yeah, I thought, I thought Go-Go. I'm like, is it Go-Go? Yeah. Or is it Skidoo? I feel like Go-Go would be more about like, you can ride this Pokemon. I don't know. Does Skido have Skidoo? Skido, but, 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 does it have leaves on its back? It has like a bit of grass on like the neck. That's right. Okay, it's not really on the back. So I guess Go-Goats still are the most solid. Anything else come to mind that has leaves on its uh, back? Septiles is seeds. Yeah. Um, Torterra. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Grottle. Yeah, Grottle. I, I kind of think Grottle, actually. Yeah. Thinking about it, it makes sense for what it is. It wouldn't want to move. Yeah. And I think Go-Go is much more about it being written. I will give you a free hint, because all of the Pokedex entries for this Pokemon are ve- somewhat vague. What? That's right. What game was it from again? Uh, this is from That's Pokemon Y. Y. Um, y okay. Yeah, this is from Y, and this uh, this Pokemon hasn't appeared in a game outside of Gen Six. All right, so not Grottle. So Go Go. Yeah, because it's not in it's not in anything else. Yeah, Go Go. No. Uh, I will accept Go Go as the answer. The answer is Skidoo. Oh, we yes, we said Skidoo too, at least. But I will give it to you because it's the same evolutionary line, right? So <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> What's Go Go but just a bigger Skidoo? Like, and like, right. are they on its back? I want to look at a picture of Skidoo now. We'll give you two points for that. You guys are three for three. Yeah. S-K-I. This, is, this next question is your multi-answer question. So you guys can get up to three points with this question. Uh, four evolutionary lines that will answer this question. Okay. What genderless Pokemon at some point in the series could learn a tract via TM? Oh, no. Um. Okay. And by assume by evolutionary line, that means it doesn't. It just has to be like a species line. Doesn't have to evolve if it doesn't have any. Correct? Yeah, it doesn't have to evolve to learn. Because I believe move move. one of them was cryogonal. No, was it cryogonal? Uh, I'm gonna give you guys two strikes, by the way, so you can make two guesses. You have to lock everything in. Okay, cool. Okay. Can Mew learn it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it, it could because it can I, learn every TM. Yeah, that's the gimmick. So I don't know if it would do that. So hmm. I guess Mew for one. We, you have to lock we it tell in. The- are we we still have a hint. Oh, you do still have a hint. That's true. Technically, yeah, we do. I don't think like I'd rather either hear than on a base stat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I again debate like base stat, like okay, we get screwed, we get screwed. I'd rather just use that. I don't uh-huh. want that. I have no idea where to start. All right, two of these are from Gen One, an evolutionary line and single Pokemon. The other two are just single Pokemon. One from Gen Five, one from Gen Seven. Okay, so one. Okay, five, so I'm seven. pretty. So I'm pretty confident Gen Five is cryogonal. Yeah, I agree there. I remember that one being a thing before. Yeah. I need Gen you to lock it probably, in when you're ready. Well, we're, we're still... We're, okay, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure Gen 1 is Mew and Starmie, because I feel like I there was a that. glitch with Starmie where it could learn that, that TM move and it just failed. I remember reading something like that. Yeah. Um, I, cause I, think it's either, I don't think either Starmie or Magneton, like the Magnemite line. No, it's it not could learn a track. I'm pretty not? sure it's okay. Starmie. Uh, okay. So we've got Cryogonal, Mew, Starmie. Do we want to lock those Gen in and 7. see how off we are? Sure. Sure. Okay, locking those. You lock all three in. Those are all correct. So you, I'll give you all three points so far. If you want the good, uh, I'll give you another like fifteen seconds to try to figure out the last one. Oh, the for, Gen okay. Seven for bragging right. Gen, so Gen 7, Seven is what was in Gen Seven? Not Silvalli. So Alola. Um, is it any of the UBs? Like for some reason, Pheromosa? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. A genderless Pokemon that can learn to track. Yeah. What's like Deontay? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying, to, like, I'm trying to think of genderless Pokemon in Gen 7, and I don't know them off the top of my head. Yeah, that's kind of a difficult one. It doesn't matter. It's... You guys got the points anyway. Pheromosa. The answer's Delmize. Crud. What? <laughs> uh, Delmize, is, wait, Delmize is genderless? Yeah. All right. He's genderless. Yeah. Uh, Staryu and Starmie, he got it in Gen 2, and they got rid of it right afterwards. Yeah, it was a yeah, glitch. I get that. Uh, and then... Cryogonal and Delmize can learn to track like even today. Uh, <laughs> Yarr, that was... ship wheel look pretty good. <laughs> hook, hook, line, and sinker, I guess. I guess I just forgot it was genderless. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that gives you guys three points. So you guys are six for four today. It's also so like 13 for seven feet points. tall. So also, yay. Your points. next question is your base deck question. And this is going to come from Skullmane Banky. What non-legendary poison type has the highest HP. Is there a legendary poison type? Technically Eternatus, which would be the answer to that question. 
That's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That would be what, an not... easy one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, non legendary poison type. Legendary. <laughs> yeah. That's the only legendary poison type. I was just like, is there even one? Like, no. Well, I guess the, I don't I guess you wouldn't count Nagana though, but. Amoongus has 110. Yeah. Amoongus is up there for sure. I don't think. Venusaur has less. Yeah. Venusaur has less. It's like 90 or 80. Maybe 100. Oh, Amoongus is 110. What else is even in that? I can't poison. Toxapex is like... no. That's defense stat. Yeah, it's um, defense stat. Dragalgy is special defense and such. Yeah, Dragalgy is no. HP. Can I think of poison uh, wall that are used, like, higher up? Because I don't think it would be, like... What about muck and Alolan muck? They're they're gloopy, and th- that tends to be kind of a HP oh, thing. I, I think they're... I think they're close, but they're also more special defense. Yeah, I think they're just... They're more special defense I think they're, like, HP. 90 or maybe 100. I don't think they're yeah. 110. I don't think they beat Amoongus. Maybe 105, but, like, they're not 110. Yeah. Um, uh, Nido Queens and Nido King are like below ninety. Low. They don't have a stat above a hundred. Yeah. Well, maybe one of their attacking stats, but irrelevant. Um. Yeah, it's not what we're. Yeah. Uh, slow. The slow brothers are one hundred. Yeah, they're they're not a hundred times. I'm gonna need an answer. Um, I guess Amoongus. I can't think of anything else better than that. I can't either. Going for it. Locking in Amoongus. Amoongus is correct. Uh, Amoongus has a base HP. Of 114. Ah, close. Next okay. is Nihilego with 109. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Muck at 105. You're right. Scun Tank at 103 and Swalot at 100. Oh, yeah. Gloopy Poison. Yep. So there you go. There's all of your answers. We figured it out. All right. So that gives you guys seven points today. I'm not sure how many points they got last week because <laughs> I didn't pay attention. So these standings might not be correct. Who knows? I'll let Sigma tell me later today when I ask him. Seth and Shamu win! <laughs> no, Woo, not quite. It. In first place, we have Whimsicott with 25 points. That seems in really second convenient. Place, in second place, we have Seth Vilo with 19 points. Squaw! In third place, we have our Sigma with 18 points. In fourth place, we have Linian with 14 points. In fifth place, we have Claude Nine with 12. In sixth place, everybody's got different points today. Um, in sixth place, we have Sublime with 10. In seventh place, we have Dr. Shamu with seven points. And in eighth place, we have P. Mickey and Jushiro tied with five points. Basket has yet to get on the board. Mm. And that is where we are today, guys. I so that is it, it for Puckle Pokey, Puckle's Pokey mm. Quiz. I could actually do it this time. You could, <laughs> theoretically, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whimsicott, I think, is on next week, though. So Dang it! Gotta <laughs> make those trivia questions really hard. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> in episode 43 of the anime. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I already I sent them in before that were harder. I don't know if they've been used or not. I what we Pokemon have not was used on them. screen at eleven minutes and nineteen seconds. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and ca- kick off uh, Puckle's Pokey Quiz, and we're gonna switch gears after this short break and bring you guys the topic. Don't forget to check out the Puckle YouTube this week to catch another extended mailbag. We have a few more emails to get through, so be sure to check it out, Puckle Podcast on YouTube. On to the topic. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is Diamond and Pearl Faithful Remake. So how does this work? What does that mean? Is it bad? Is it good? Honestly, I think it's really good. <laughs> I kind of agree. Like Gen 4 is if they if you're going to faithful re- recreate any gen, I think Gen 4 is the right one to do it. I hope it's complete with slow moving HP yes. bar. Uh, please no. Please no, actually. Yes. <laughs> then that'll make the stall matches with the 60-minute timer even better. It'll balance it out. Perfection. So I've got a list of things here that I think are really interesting that we've probably forgotten about that have been lost of time because Gen 4 is so far right? away. It doesn't from feel that way, I mean, but it is. 15 years? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. Diamond and Pearl remakes, I think the number one thing that I find the most interesting about Diamond and Pearl in general is if... They are as faithful as they could be, and they include Diamond and Pearl National Decks. Yeah, or Platinum. Every single Pokemon... No, no, without Platinum. I'm not even oh, talking without, Platinum okay, right now, mind. Seth. Never mind. Catch, catch this. I'm going to blow your mind. Go. You can catch every non-legendary, non-starter from previous generations in Diamond and Pearl Remake. In Diamond and Pearl, minus Tangela and Tropius. What? Huh. Didn't know that. Yeah. Because, like, post-game, they just, like, open up a bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. Post-game goes berserk. Man, Diamond and Pearl's just freaking awesome. Like, yeah, if they do it the way that they're saying they're kind of hinting they're going to do, where they really, by what we've seen, they haven't added anything, really. They've just reskinned it, basically. So if they're Mm -hmm. actually reskinning this one, this one's a good one to reskin. As opposed to, like, Gen 3, which was, it needed something. 
absolutely i don't think you could just regen like reskin gen 3 yeah diamond and pearl also tried to really remedy a lot of the quote-unquote issues people had with gen mm-hmm. 3 because when gen 3 came out i know there was like there there was like minor backlash yeah. that you couldn't trade pokemon to it and stuff i'm not sure if you guys remember that but oh, yeah. I, I i remember it being a thing i found that super interesting though like mm-hmm. when i looked that up i couldn't believe it because like platinum obviously is a little bit better because you can catch tingle and trophies <laughs> 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 But that's about it. Because probably, there's a tan growth in the yeah. game. They'll probably just shove it in this one anyway, so. I assume they're going to go more for the platinum aspect of it. Like, hey, mm-hmm. here's like all from platinum except for like, we'll throw a Giratina in the post game with the Greasiest Orb type thing and make, instead of making it up. I'm hoping that we get the platinum Sinnoh decks. Probably. But yeah. they give us the Diamond and Pearl exclusives. Yeah. I expect it's going to be a happy balance between the two. We see like the Gracia Flower NPC. So I'm kind of hoping that's boding well for us, that we might get things like it. It's literally the one NPC we could have seen to be like, it could go either way. Yeah, I don't think that answers anything, because I mean, that's just like, hey. No, it just means Shaman Sky forms in the game, right? It, like, exactly. Like, whatever. Fine. Duh. <laughs> They're not going to add DLC to a remake. I still think Shaman Sky forming in the game is big deal yeah. in general. That means that the event's in there somehow. Mm-hmm. whether it's some kind of like post-game auto unlock or if they're going to try to like redo the events in some odd way which gives me hope that it ties to home too because it kind of unlocks the mythical part of it like they did with deoxys you nice to be able to catch deoxys i really hope they demythicalize something yeah and right? dark Rai too because that's a cool event dark Rai should be demythicalized i love dark Rai's event that is amazing to be fair i think the gen 4 events in general are very well done. yeah they were all very well done we just never really we got most of them except for like one yeah. i think we missed arceus and yeah. I'm, I'm even lumping in like the heart gold soul silver stuff we got too because the sinjo ruins was done very mm-hmm. well yeah i thought at least like sinjo ruins were done very well i mean you're gonna get like some kind of wretched gigas thing too right mm-hmm. you have to at least be able to transfer in the Reggies, if not catch them like you could in Platinum. Yeah. Yeah. But even then, the Platinum one was really dumb because you like needed a specific Regigigas like from an event. I think at the very least, even if it's, if it's a faithful remake, I have no problem. I just hope they fill the post game with a lot of stuff. Yep. Because that's yep. my main thing with any Pokemon game. If you have a good post game, I'll, I'm happy. Like if your post game mm-hmm. literally, hey, here's the Battle Tower. I'm not gonna play it. Yeah. Like I don't care. I also expect that we're gonna get something i don't know like we're super early on in the reveal cycle for this and i i think that's something that a lot of people have gotten well they they've forgotten that like hey they're not gonna just be like here diamond Pearl remakes and it's got everything that you've ever wanted yeah we didn't know that we were gonna get additional megas and omega ruby alpha sapphire for like three months after they announced it yeah i i think that's something just to keep in mind is there's probably more to be revealed. I don't expect we hear anything until like May or June. I agree with you there. I uh, hope that so there's more. It's going to be a drought. I I imagine there's going to be more. They might show off some of the other things. I I was not super excited by the trailer because the things when they're just like it's a it's a faithful remake and they showed us like I don't know why this bothers me, but it bothers me to no end that they showed the union room and maybe it's just like repressed memories of it not working or something. <laughs> Like, the union room, they, like, showed it to me, and I was like, oh, I don't like that. I I don't know. Like, after I've had time to really, like, sit and reflect on it, I'm just like, this could probably be okay. Mm -hmm. It could be fun. I I also like the idea of kind of, like, revisiting Diamond and Pearl, like, unfeathered. I they, they're obviously the games that are like closest to like my Pokemon experience just because that's like when I really like turned into Pokemon especially competitive right. same I mean uh, we've said it time and time again on the podcast that's when it really took off for the both of us well I think it also helped that you could do like Wi-Fi battles like Wi-Fi was like that was yep. unheard of back in 2007 2006 I still got the USB adapter <laughs> so do I <laughs> It is not good. Do not use it. No, do not. Well, the servers are shut down anyway, right? So you can't. Yeah. Well, they, they, there is a way to like oh, go get yeah. the events still. Yeah. If you were playing like OG Diamond Pearl Platinum, there is a way to go get the events. It's a little bit harder than doing it for the Gen 5 games, but you can't do mm-hmm. it. As long as you have a 3DS, you can you can play with the DNS settings and you can go get it. There's a website for it somewhere, right. that's, which I do that's recommend right. if you want like full Pokemon experience. I don't know. Like, there's so much in here, though, that I'm, like, super excited for. Because, like, I kind of hope they do, like, Manaphy as well. Oh, yeah. In some form. Mm-hmm. Demythicalize that. Find the egg somewhere. That would be cool. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I love I the want... events. The events are just what make it. They make the legendaries feel legendary. And I, I want that back. I want that faithful part back. 
we've said this for like 10 yeah, years i know instead of <laughs> instead of just here is monkey then it, you have to <laughs> make an here event is monkey it. go watch movie go watch movie monkey has scarf <laughs> like having to hatch an egg having to go get professor oak's letter having to go to sleep <gasps> put us on a put, pokemon like, yeah. sleep stop it what if they package it with like stop the it. heart gold soul silver poke walker at the, the oh monkey sleeper <laughs> <laughs> That's we how you get Dark Rise Pokemon Sleep. You have to tie it to your game to unlock Dark Rise. Episode over. <laughs> and then no, they're armored. The beginning. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> you have to go actually fight pa- Arceus, and then like it ends there, and then you pick up in Legends. And then once you beat you Legends, you can transfer Legends. Arceus to the game. If you have save data for Pokemon B- Brilliant Diamond, then Legends unlocks something nifty. <laughs> I can see that happening, by the way. Oh, I can yeah, see something yeah, like yeah. that happening. The other thing that I thought, like, there's so many things in Diamond and Pearl that are really cool. Other things, uh, Super Contest Comeback, which yeah. is almost like the good version of Contest, and which happened in Gen 3. Mm-hmm. And then they're just like, we must make it more complicated for you. So, so here's also something that we get. Like, we get ball capsules back or ball seals. Yes, that was what I was saying. Just take the mm. letters off and you're fine. You don't have mm-hmm. to worry really, about any yeah. curse words. Just make them pretty. Mm-hmm. I just want sparkles. I want it back. That'd be so cool. I'm excited for that. The underground has me super excited. Too. The only thing I hope they do with the underground, and they probably won't because I want it, is I really hope the underground... Uh, what what am I trying to say? I, I'm really hoping that the underground is going to go ahead and be online. Yep. I'm not hopeful that that's going to be the case. I think it could. I hope it could, because I, I mean, that that was kind of the gimmick. That was the whole thing, so... Yeah, you say that. I know. It, it wasn't online. The underground wasn't online at all. It was, it, was, it was local. Getting with people was the whole gimmick, is what I'm getting at, so... Yes, yes. I'm kind of hoping that they go ahead and they draw, they make it an online experience so that we can... Like, you and you, the three of us can go together and play in the underground, right? Yeah. I, I would really enjoy that. I wonder how faithful to the, to the little mining it's going to be. That's hard to do without the stylus, right? Like, yeah, that'll activate some muscle memory in my brain that I've long since dis- dis- discarded, so that'll be I've fun. I've spent a lot of time in mining in the underground, uh-huh. yes. I love it. I spent it. a lot of time. Yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to translate that. There, there's obviously things that they're going to have issues doing that with. I would love to see how it translates. Man, the sprites from that are really good, actually. The sprites from the underground are really good. I'm a fan. Because mm-hmm. you need to mine to make the underground work, so I don't know how they're going to do it, mm-hmm. actually. It might just be a mini game where you just move a thing around and tap, and just press A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still like, want to know how they're going to handle Pal Park. Will you still be able to polish your badges? Probably. Oh no! You want to know what? This is the one Pokemon game that has touch screen interaction. If you want to do that, I mean, they they could. That's probably how you might mine it. Like really. Well, so they have to come up with both ways to play it on the TV and to also play it. Yeah, so you probably right? have a hand you can use, but you can also oh, probably or just yeah. use the right cons. This probably gonna be. They probably will have multiple aspects of doing it. Dang it! I forgot yeah. about the TV part. Blech. Yeah, you have to be able to play it on TV. Like you anything on Switch, to... you have to be able to play on yeah. TV. You Not a faithful remake. <laughs> oh my gosh! They 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 said it was gonna come with like modern conveniences. So. That changes a lot of things too. Like the whole Poke Gear itself being kind of constantly on underneath you. Like where's that gonna go? Is that gonna it's be not a whole Poke separate Gear? Is Poke Etch? Poke it's Poke Etch. Okay. Whatever, whatever it is, you know what I mean. It's different. Poke it's tech different. TV that you go to the clowns to talk about and activate yep. nightmares. But I wonder how that's <laughs> gonna. Is that gonna be a whole separate screen that you have to pull up? Is that gonna be like the plus? Probably. Button? That's that's what I imagine. It's gonna be some kind of screen you have to pull up to mm-hmm. see. I don't know, unless they, like, give you the same aspect ratio on the Switch screen, right? Yeah. And, like, it's, like, half the screen is your Poketch and half the screen is your gameplay. That would be awful. Yeah. Uh, please, not the way to do it. Uh, absolutely not the way to do it. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see how it plays yeah. out. Uh, but there's, like, I mean, the Safari Zone also in Diamond and Pearl was actually really good, too. So I'm kind of hoping that we get Diamond and Pearl safari zone i'm hoping that we get the marsh back and you have to get unstuck and every time you get stuck it activates a mini game that you have to play in order to get unstuck and then you take one more step uh, and get stuck again okay it doesn't require a mini game you just have to press the buttons i lot. know that's that's the <laughs> that's the unfaithful remake part like that's what i'm hoping for <laughs> there's just a mini game give me my give me my mini game to get out of the marsh every it's not time. as good as the safari zone from heart gold soul silver but that, that one gets cool. like uber complicated yeah. Oh, yeah. Having to shuffle things and all that kind of nonsense. 
Yeah, well, where you have to like choose like which squi- like what environments are in your safari which zone. Which four co- sections do you want? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, and there's twenty of them to choose from. Yeah, yeah they must be doing platinum stuff because like you're gonna have Rotom issues if you don't, right? Uh-huh. Like, is without that you're not gonna be able to change Rotom's form. Yeah, which would kind of suck. Uh, and I imagine, I imagine if a Pokemon's got forms in this game, it, it and it's in that game that they'll be present in yeah. some form. I mean, especially after seeing Gracia Flower. Lady. That, that's uh, what I was gonna say. The Rotom forms are basically confirmed because of the Gracia Flower. Yeah. So we're gonna get some platinum stuff. I wonder if we'll get what's the guy's name? Is it Sharon? Or no, no, Sharon's from no Sharon's I Gen forget, Four. Is Gen? Okay, so it is Sharon. Sharon's Sharon. the person with the Rotoms. Yes, he's the one that uses yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotom. I wonder if we'll get some stuff with him. That'd be cool. I'd be a big fan of that. I don't know. There's so much, like, the events I'm very excited for, like right. you said. So I think that's the biggest thing that I'm going to love redoing. Because, you know, Sword and Shield had its stuff, but it didn't have mm-hmm. events. Like, there's Dynamax events, uh, yes, but those aren't... Those don't I don't count. get excited for those. It's just like, oh, cool, yeah. a battle. Not like, oh, cool, yeah. a bed. I think the closest thing is that we've gotten was, like, Calyrex. Yeah. The whole yeah. mini- the story there. Urshifu's sucked. Yeah, it wasn't good. Uh... <laughs> I, I do think Calyrex is probably the best uh, example of something where it's just like, yes, this was very cool. Uh, and it, I, I think it's enhanced compared to the Gen 4 thing. But I, I really I hope that they keep doing that mm-hmm. <laughs> with future quote unquote mythicals, because I don't know if they're going to do mythicals anymore with the DLC the way it is and how flat Zarud fell. Well, I mean, they still did Zarud even with all that plan. So, yeah, I'm kind of hoping, you know what? Uh, is interesting to me is that they were kind of intentionally like ending us at 800 in Gen 4 or Gen 7 and then like Maguna's like 801 and stuff like that mm-hmm. and right now we're sitting at 898 I think with the, with Calyrex. That feels right. Uh, So there's like two more to get us to 900 and I'm sure they'll like try yeah. just to like hit 900. There is only one mythical right? Like Zarud's the only one right? Zarud's the only mythical right now. And that's what makes me think there's either more mythicals that are coming yeah. or there, like there's something. I mean, I don't think they'll put it in the Diamond and Pearl games. Honestly, they'll probably put it in Legends if they add something yeah. new uh, just to be like, Legends has something different, I promise. And and then we get we get that. Primal Dialga and Primal Palkia. Uh, that would be the way to do it. And that's what's causing happy. the time rift. That's uh, well, There's no time that's rift. That's how you catch Porygon. I wouldn't be surprised if they supplement some of the Pokemon in the Diamond and Pearl decks they probably in will. Legends in Legends with, like, other Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I think Legends is going to be a hodgepodge of everything, yeah. I feel. That would Whatever be, yeah, they feel will... fit. Because, with the, well, you got yeah. Gen 5 already and Gen 6. Or Gen 7, sorry, because you have well, whatever. I mean, I think that's where you kind of put in, like, the quote-unquote six well not quote-unquote the 63 missing pokemon after national decks up to gen mm-hmm. 4 they'll probably try to you, do that you, yeah you could shove them in right you could you could make an argument that brunch is out probably there gonna, like i think they're really more or less gonna make it more of a uh like hey here's a bunch of cool pokemon that we would like we want to see interact and then do yeah that. here's pokemon we think would be in japan yeah pretty much if they don't do it in diamond and pearl re- in, in bdsp i expect it to happen in legends yeah because at this point they haven't said too much like we, like i said it's very early in the release cycle for bdsp and we didn't even know about mirage islands to help like supplement the decks or even the mm. pokinav for a very long time in the omega ruby alpha sapphire lead up and so i wouldn't be surprised if they're just like oh hey we did add in this new thing where you can catch like mini or in the battle area mm-hmm. post game so I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened in the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Yeah, yeah. Keep, I think they're keep the probably gonna, when they say faithful. I think they're referring to the main story. Like, hey, yes. the main run through is gonna be very faithful. We're not gonna mess with it a lot. Mm-hmm. But post game, we're gonna add some stuff for you. Moment. Yeah, we're just gonna add stuff. What, that's, I think that's what most games kind of go for too. Like, here's like a faithful just Pokemon game to go through. Yeah, Mo- most games I should say they should, like seven and eight were more or less different. I would say yes, but yes, like yes. other games are just like, hey, we're gonna be making it. Here's the story playthrough. We're keeping it mostly linear as we, as like normal game goes mm-hmm. beat the gyms get the badges have fun and then post games like here's some fun stuff to play around with afterwards i wonder if their use of like faithful remakes was like there to help them make the excuse for the graphics i think my brothers be partial too. let us have a moment of silence for chibi cyrus trying to tell okay, us about destroying to be fair, the world if you put it if you put it right next to diamond and pearl though it looks pretty like accurate <laughs> while true it looks chibi pretty accurate. cyrus 
My favorite thing was the uh, what's it called? They had the the Reddit thread and they had the meme that somebody goes, "It's been chibi all along." <laughs> and, <laughs> always has and, like been. they. It always has been chibi all along, and like they show like the old sprites and stuff, and it's like yeah. you're probably not wrong. <laughs> Fair, it's been all along. but it, we're not used to it chibi. anymore. No, absolutely not. I I think they did it, and I think it might have been too late to do anything different. I'm gonna uh, rebuild the world. It, w- it it just it looks a little bad. I wish they would just do something like a little bit different. It's not much that it would take, I think, to do something different. <laughs> what but. if he's the only thing that isn't chibi? Like it's just full on Cyrus. Uh, I, I, over. I've already remade myself. I also expected something like this anyway. Like, everybody was going to be disappointed because it was either going to be in the Switch engine yep. or they were going to do something like this because there's no way you do a Sinnoh remake in the style of Sword and Shield properly yeah. um, without it feeling bad. And so, like, they're not going to have overworld encounters. They, uh, you need to stick to a grid. Yeah, very much and so. It, the it, grid's like, going to throw it, me it, off. It, it's going to make sense for something like... Uh, it would make like if you look at how Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire transitioned from X and Y, like that was definitely a more natural transition because you were still on the right. grid. The more I think about it, the more I was just like, oh, this is sad. This is kind of weak. And then the more I think about it, I'm just like, these games could be fun. Like, yeah, this could be really I'm fun. I'm getting more and more hype for these by the day, partially because yeah. like the more I think about it, the more I'm going to enjoy it. And partially, yeah, too, exactly. the memes are fire. <laughs> so yeah I, i'm like i'm not upset about this at all at this point I, yeah. it's more of like what what am i gonna realize that i forgot about right? yeah it was, it, it, a lot of more of an initial like oh okay it'll feel yeah. like it, but it's gonna be a game one way or the other it's like we'll see how it is when it comes out because like it could be again oh yeah it, really yeah. Co- it depends on like again this is so early we don't know anything other than the fact that they're like it's a whatever it's so faithful remake yeah yeah whatever that means exactly because we we assume we know what that means mm-hmm. but what if we find out it's like oh we're just remaking everything looking the same nothing's actually the same what do you mean like here's here the rowlet like what mm-hmm. like we don't all oh, legends don't really, yeah legends i have no idea what's gonna happen there like well not even legend i'm talking about the main game they say faithful remake yeah. but like we don't know what they're referring to what are their which parts faithful? What, what, are they refer- what do they mean when faithful remake yeah, especially when you have to, like, incorporate newer, quote-unquote, things. Like, right? we're, yeah. we're just going on our assumption than what the general populace kind of thinks the general uh, faithful remake is, but, like, mm-hmm. are they just saying the story's the same? Yeah, I, I or mean, are they also saying the they, entire game is the same? They couldn't have played all their cards anyway, because exactly. then what do you talk about in the next exactly. seven months? Exactly. We don't, we're, we're working off of, like, what, like, five minutes, not even of just, vi- like... Not even five like, minutes. It was two yeah. minutes, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. I'll just take five minutes to make a nice number. Yeah. yeah. It, it was shorter than that. It was by far. Yeah, it, exactly. Like, so, again, we won't know much until we have a more of a full-on trailer or, like, exploration I agree of the game or more explanation. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping for Switch connectivity. I think that's my only, that's my only hope. I, I don't day. think it'll connect to Switch. Connecting to home is more likely, but. Yeah, oh, yeah, it'll connect to home. I'm hoping anything. that those mods go to home. That's, I think, what he's that more. makes sense. Ta- like what we talked about on Battlecast. Hey. Yeah, we talked about it on Battlecast this week, so uh, make sure you check that yeah, out. I, I expect home Plus. connectivity from here on out with everything. Yeah, it makes me think. I I want to hear it from their mouths first that like this isn't going to get added to Switch. Yeah. yeah. Before I jump to too many conclusions, but I I'm already prepared for it to not happen. Give me Glyscore <laughs> back, please. I'm already prepared for it to not happen, but yeah. we'll we'll see. Like I don't know if it'll go to Switch, but I think everything will go to home. My Legends actually might be a bit Absolutely. different, but I think they'll. Legends will go to home. Legends will go to I home. I want to say yeah. will. Yeah, that's how they're going to demythical Arceus. That's you have to do that. And it'll be in a yeah. cool wooden Pokéball and it'll be nifty. The way I'll put it Shamu and you can choose it. I think you'll agree with this is if they don't put the Pokémon from BDSP into Switch, Legends will connect to home. <laughs> that's that's my two cents because eh, at that way. point they're just trying to like make a culture of like hey we're gonna have these different games but you can put all the pokemon at home from mm-hmm. all of them yeah i expect that more of a thing than like because i don't i don't think everything in that yeah i don't think everything in like bdsp will go to swish i don't i, I don't know if they're expanding so. the swish decks at all anymore i think they're leaving it as is i agree with you i obviously i would love it i would love stuff in more stuff in swish but i don't think they're if they're gonna make a hub game they're gonna make home the hub game not swish I think that really hurts their competitive field at that point because if without yeah, new no, things like like VGC is like dropping like a rock in terms of yep. players. Well, it's also there's no a lot of stuff too. Is like you only have so much you can do via on um, like non interaction mm-hmm. too. Oh, I agree with that. But it always happens near the end of a generation anyway. That too, yeah. 
So we, we don't know what they're going to do. Yep. They, they could turn home into a battle simulator. Who knows? It upsets me because they're going to use the same battle engine, but yeah. <laughs> I kind of hope that they do it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes at the end of the day. But this is where we will go ahead and end it. We're going to kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. So we will catch you guys on the flip flop. <laughs> And welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 646, Kirim, the Boundary Pokemon. Dwelling within it is a power even greater than that of Reshiram or Zekrom, but the extreme cold keeps that power bound. Ooh, I like that. What a metal Pokedex entry. Metal. Oh, wow. I'm so emo, I'm less powerful, guys. I'm so strong, I have to keep myself cool to be to be cool. Yeah. So today, the Pokemon we're specifically talking about is not just like base Kirim. We're talking about white Kirim because you can use it right now and it's fun. Woo! And so white Kirim is better than black Kirim in a multitude of ways, mostly because it can't yeah. be intimidated. And <laughs> and a lot of its moves are special based compared to black Kirim, who doesn't get ice punch. No, it gets icicle spear now. <laughs> oh my Yay. God, I hate this. Makes it bet too good for OU. Yay. So, White Kirim has a base HP of 125, like regular Kirim. I think the only difference is that it gets base 40 to either attack or special attack, is when he goes Black and black Kirim or White Kirim. So, White Kirim has base 120 attack, base 90 defense. 120 attack is still good, by the way. And that's its yeah. low one. The base 170 special attack, base what? 100 special defense, and base 95 speed. They actually take 10 base points out of the uh, other attack stat and shove it into special defense or defense, by the way. No, they put it into the attacking stat because it's one. No, 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 they don't. Cure. No, they don't. It's base 130. He gets 40 extra base power um, in general. Well, I mean, that's just where you put the numbers. I could say they put it in the other attacking stat and then also added defense. Like, well, so they add 40 points in general. They just add 40 yeah. points overall to, to Kirim's base stat total. Yeah. It goes from 660 to 700, and then they drop the they drop the attack or special attack stat, and they throw the other 10 in the defense stat relative to that, I guess, for whatever reason. Because it's not good enough. It might make it closer to what whatever Zekrom or Reshiram's stat spread is. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I want to look at that, actually. I want to know now. Uh, so, White Kirim gets uh, a lot of cool stuff, um, including Ice Burn. But <laughs> it it never uses it. So no. ice burn, freeze shock. Yeah, it gets it gets some nice moves that it doesn't use. So this week uh, we didn't actually talk about which Pokemon we're going to take, but I'm sure we can all handle all of them. This week we have a white Kira and White team for BSS. Uh, I ran it actually for my UTC match last week, and it was a lot of fun. So Kira and White, obviously the star, and is uh, running Choice Scarf because base 95 speed isn't always the best. <laughs> You can still get punched by an Urshifu real hard if you are a white Kyurem without a Choice Scarf. Ability Turbo Blaze because you can't have anything else. Eevee's 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed, Timid Nature because you're going to go fast like Sonic. Uh, freeze Dry so you can hit those Water Types real hard. Draco Meteor because you're Dragon. Fusion Flare because you're Kyurem White and you need Fire Coverage. Uh, and also Sheer Cold because this is BSS and you can do that and sometimes you don't have anything else you can click. <laughs> I love Oko moves in BSS, by the way. I think every year in UUTC, I purposely run them because I'm allowed to. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I, I mean, okay, so they're 30% accurate, but if you do it's the an math... To anything. Yeah, it's one, it's an answer to anything. Like, if you get stuck, it's you can just get out. Uh, on top of that, it, the accuracy, like, the math works out that if you use it two times in a row, you're more likely to hit at least one of those than not hit at all. I mean, it's the same odds as Focus Blast missing, which means I'm going to hit it every single time. Same odds as Scald Burning. <laughs> I have hit it. I have hit it more often than I should have. <laughs> than I feel like I should. Yeah. It's like the reverse of Scald. It's like, oh yeah, if you hit, you you do what you want. But if you don't hit, then it's like, yeah. So if you ever just like, like you're hitting, you're just not getting what you want off of Scald. It certainly scares the opponent. Yeah. Yeah. Does. So fear factor. Yeah, absolutely. You could get super lucky and just click sheer cold three times in a row and just win, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you could, realistically. So if you were just like, hey, I want to build a fantasy core, we also have an Azumarill for you with uh, Mystic Water, huge power, because if not, it's not an Azumarill. 
Uh, this is a very specific. Uh, uh, excuse me, you can you don't have to run huge power for Azumarill. You can run yeah, Sap Sipper. Sap Sipper Whirlpool Pairs Song. Yeah, that hurts people's souls. That exists. It does. It is very true. This one is almost there for you, Shamu, but not quite. Uh, it's got 20, 124 HP, 252 attack, 4 defense, 124 special defense, 4 speed, probably to make it specially bulky for some reason. I don't know why. I, probably I don't something know and then kill something. Yep. Out of it nature, liquidation, play rough, aqua jet, and perish song. So good for you, Azumarill. The perish song is cool in BSS. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's always, I, I think perish song is always fun. It forces switches. Yeah. Or something dies. But uh, yeah, somebody else take something else. I'll take the next two. Next up, we have OU's king and savior, Lander Aetherian, with a rocky helmet. Obviously, it's got the ability to intimidate. And EVs are as follows 244 HP, 4 attack, 252 defense, 4 special defense, and 4 speed, because level 50 EVs are weird. And an yeah. impish nature to go along with that. Move set of Earthquake, Rock Tomb, U Turn, and Stealth Rock. I could see this in OU. Yeah, this is something that's pretty standard now in yeah. BSS anyway. Just to kind of... Uh, the Stealth Rock you have because what else is your lander is going to run uh, if it's not a Dynamax target? Hidden Power... Oh. Sometimes you'll throw a fly on there for, like, Dynamax target nonsense, but... Exactly. Yeah. But your Dynamax target is obviously Kirim White. <laughs> yep. <laughs> very, very clearly it is it is Kirim White. Yeah. And you don't want to Dynamax anything else unless you absolutely have to. Like, you might have an issue where, like, Urshifu's on the field. There's maybe not even Urshifu, but Zacian really likes to beat up Kirim Whites. But there's a lot of Pokemon here that beat up Zacians. Yeah. Like the one you're going to talk about next, Seth. Exactly. It doesn't exactly beat it up, but it can certainly make its day kind of yucky. Yep. It's Heatran with leftovers. Ability is Flash Fire, obviously. Uh, but who knows? Maybe someone's mad and runs Flame Body. But this is Flash Fire. Flame Body was just made available to you. Exactly, yeah. You could do it if you want and really hate immunities. EVs are as follows. 212 HP, 44 defense, 4 special attack, 108 special defense, 140 speed with a calm nature. So it's a kind of a tankier Heatran with a lot of special defense over defense. And moves are Magma Storm, Earth Power, Taunt, and Substitute. Again, something I could see in OU. (laughs) Oh, it's got leftovers too. I forget if I mentioned that. Ooh, it's a bulky Heatran. Yeah, you can. It's it's a stall breaker too because between Magma Storm trapping, taunt, keeping them from recovering, sub to block any status or mm-hmm. weird things they do, it's a stall breaker. Yep, and it almost counters uh, that uh, that Zacian. Other than the, yeah, almost, yeah. almost. I said almost. I said almost. Next though, we've got a Tapu Koko with a magnet. Your max special attack, max speed, four special defense, timid nature. You know, just it's the standard like special attack in Coco with uh, T Bolt, the Volt Switch, Deathling Gleam, and Taunt. This is like standard Coco. <laughs> yeah, it's the standard. Yeah. Coco is good, so. Yeah, we just want it for this extra coverage. I assume it probably helps out against like Kyogre, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the met the meta for. Uh, right it probably will. Kyogre in BSS. I don't know if Kyogre is super popular. The answer the answer is like Yveltal's there sometimes. And yeah. it, it just it's good electric coverage. It's fast. It hits stuff yeah. hard. Yeah, I mean it's just good. Coco's good. Yeah, done. It, that's two. And then our last lot is a single strike Urshifu with a focus sash, max attack, max B Jolly with four special defense, wicked blow, close combat, sucker punch, and I know I know you really like taunt, so have another taunt. I don't know why you would put taunt there. You could have literally anything else. I like. I guess I don't even know. I guess they, because like I'm just looking at him like Sash with Taunt. I don't I don't know like. Yeah, I feel I like it was Sash just was, like I thought Sash counter with a thing, but I guess they're just running Sash to run Sash I mean, so you can at least kill something. You don't need anything else with your Inertiafu. You have your stab. You have priority. But... My my answer is either a Poison Jab or an Iron Head. Eh, just go to Heatran. My answer is still a Poison Jab or an Iron Head. Just to murder a fairy. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I would honestly think that would be the way to go, because in case like, Xerneas is a thing. Yep. I, I don't disagree with that. I, I think unless Shamu's right. Unless you're running Taunt to stop Xerneas, yeah. and then you just die. Mm-hmm. But then also, I don't know, does Urshifu have speed Xerneas? Uh, no. No. Absolutely not. 99, 97. Okay. Uh, I, I knew it was weird. I knew it was a weird 90. I didn't know. 
I wasn't sure. Yeah, so it does outspeed. You're right. It does? Yeah. No, it, it does not. No. no, it does not. No, Ursus what do you mean? 97, Xerneas is 99. Yeah, no, no, that's what we said. That's what I said. That's what I meant. You're, oh, you're, that's your what I it meant. was applying to the Xerneas, yes. not the Ursus. Yes, there was right. pronoun. We had pronoun issues, yes. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, then I don't know why you're running Taunt, then. You're better off just running the, the, like, the yeah, poison jabber iron head just to probably yeah. murder it on this initial thing. And if it goes for an attack, that's what you're sashed. Yep. But there, that's, that's probably some reason we don't know. But. Yep. Uh, so I really like this team. I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, I definitely recommend you guys go and do the same. The rental team will be up on the Discord, so make sure to go and grab it when you get the chance. Uh, on that note, we're going to kick it on over, though, to the mailbag. It's mail time! Send in your emails! And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Taurus, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Cow feet. And as always, we'll give out the Green Taurus badge to whoever starts a good conversation or we remember. So we're going to go ahead and read three emails. We got a lot of emails last week. Um, this is the segment of the show where we read your emails. You have to send them in to us at pucklepodcast.gmail.com. Let us know anything you want to talk about. Um, we typically have a prompt for you guys. Last week, we wanted to know what you thought about po- how many Pokemon games. Are there too many of them coming out? So we're going to go ahead and read these emails, and I'm, I'm very excited to jump into them. So let's get into it. We're going to go ahead and read our first one. I believe our first one this week is going to be from Crowley. All right, I've got that one. Hey, Thatch and awesome co-hosts. Thatch, you're okay, too. I'm okay. That's, that's, probably, the best, that's probably the best description of my abilities and what I bring to the show. <laughs> I'm okay. This is Crowley writing in about the question, and having never played Pokemon Snap, I'm on the edge about whether to buy it or not. What will probably happen is I'll wait for six months, and it drops for a discount. When it comes to BDSP, though, Piplup Gang, I am definitely buying that the second it comes out, and I think people are overreacting it because of the art style. Chibi rules! Well, we just discussed that earlier on the show. Haha. <laughs> Chibi's He's okay. Right. Yeah. I do hope that this isn't a, quote, fa- as, quote, faithful as everyone says. Legends Arceus will be fun considering that this is a whole game in Sinnoh's wild area, but there isn't enough info for this game, so I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening to me ramble. This is Crowley signing off. To be fair, the information we have for both of those games is relatively similar. <laughs> yeah. In a sense, you can yeah. assume a lot with the... Yeah, we get a, you get a lot more assumptions. You get more assumptions yeah. with DDSP, but I think uh, in terms of just like where you are, like it's just like, yeah, we might know like a little bit more there, but not a lot. Yeah. Legends, we have nothing. We're working yes. on, like, scraps. Mm-hmm. We've got, like, a reference document for BDSP, because we've got the pre-made, like, the, the first games for that, so we've got, like, we've got a reference document, mm-hmm. actually, but with Legends, oh, we have no idea, because the whole new type of thing, a whole new game, not a remake. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll still be able to evolve Magnezon with a Thunderstone, or will we have to go back to Mount... Probably Mount Cornet. Or both. I could see it being both. I could see being both, but I think they're going to rely on Cornet because it, you can do it in that game. Mm, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. With the new players that might have come in with Sword and Shield, maybe maybe they're not used to it. That, that Hmm. Just thought of that. Just thought of that. They could have someone saying, like, so it could be just a random NPC talking about it, too. I, I'm yeah. also concerned about whether or not there's going to be a Sylveon in that game. Oh. Uh, That's the yeah. question. I think, I think huh. Sylveon is going to be the answer. Sylveon will be the key to a lot of our questions. <laughs> in BDSP, to be completely honest, for the same reason you just described, key, but it'll, it'll open up a lot more. Uh, like, okay, yeah. so a lot more things that are now possible. We gotta be able yes. to see it. Yeah, yeah, because if Sylveon's in that game, one, you've got your changed evolution methods, because Sylveon was changed in Gen Eight to be a fr- <laughs> was to be a friendship based evolution. Oh yeah, but then they can still revert back. There's nothing saying that they can't. Oh yeah, yeah but there's not gonna be Pokemon on me in like. No, no, but I'm saying, like, yeah, you say, when you're saying with Sylveon, like, yeah, you could change the evolution method for that, but doesn't mean they're not going to revert the other ones back to normal. You have no idea. Oh, no, no, I, I agree with you. I think it's just a good sign that, like, they'll keep those. It's a good sign that they're in, they're implementing newer things, but... Also, again, especially if they're, like, keeping the Swish style. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's really hard because we don't know anything. We got two minutes. Yeah, I think... I think Mount Coronet would still work, for sure. I think that absolutely will yeah. work. That part will work, no, no matter what. It's just whether or not they keep the other stuff. Suddenly they make the remake so faithful that you do get Sylveon, but it's normal type. <laughs> and there are no fairies. 
Oh man, I don't know. I I think it'll be pretty pretty okay. I don't know. Well, it takes it's going to take time. Like we just need to get more release cycle stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's obviously going to be there's going to be something different, be, or at least something for them to talk about in the upcoming months because they're not just going to be like, yeah, this game's coming out, and then the game comes out in October slash November. Yeah. All right. Our next one is going to be from Academic J. Oh, right. Happy not Monday, Puckle Crew. First off, for the fantastic job from the fluffiest last episode, and I hope Zach is taking some full heels. No, you just, you just rubbed your face with Castellio cones, right? I in, I legitimately inhaled Sudafed for like seven days. <laughs> where do you buy that item? Yeah, where is that? That's in a, that's in a region that you haven't been yet. Uh, it's where Youngers actually come from. Oh. <laughs> but um, just... <laughs> as I listened to this last episode, a lot of talk from the co-hosts as well as emails were speculating on a Delta-esque episode for the BDSP games. Uh, I just wanted to add how fun it would be to make a Looker episode in which she investigates all the legend slash mystical poke happenings around Sinnoh. It would be somewhat easy to incorporate Looker as well as removing the necessity to choose which Pokemon gets the Delta treatment. You would be able to incorporate the Shaman Darkrai he trainer which he gets pretty nicely and it fall into the post-game legendary trope as well. Thanks for reading, and all the best, Academic J. I think Heatran's okay on its own. Probably same with Roger Gigas, but the, the Mythicals, I think, they should... Looker is a good way to do it, I think. I miss yeah. Looker. You could do it with Looker, like how you did it with the Ultra Beast before, and, mm-hmm. like, Sun and Moon. Like, you have, you're have running around with, like, him slash uh, Annabelle. Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. I think that's kind of what they're going to do, that, or they're going to go, like, hey, meet me at these, like, here are, like, five places to go to the... No, they'll probably make it more linear. They'll probably do it like that. They probably wouldn't, like, hey, have fun, go find all of them. They're probably going to make it into an episodic thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would ex- absolutely love that. I don't know. I, I would love to see some form where it's included in the game, and it's not like, oh, you must go to GameStop and download this event. Right. I'm so done with those for I'm a lot of reasons. I'm done with them, yes, very much so. I think my favorite thing that they've done in quote-unquote modern Pokemon for events was how they handled the Eon ticket in Oraz. Yeah. Uh, where people just randomly got them, and then the only way for you to get them after that was to just get street passed by somebody who already had one with your 3DS. That was so cool, opening up your 3DS and being like, oh, where did this come from? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was cool. I loved it. And I I mean, you obviously can't do it now because we don't have street pass anymore. But I, I really love that, and I want that to happen again. I want something like that. Not to mention the panoramic. I just realized what I'm excited for. The trainers, the duel, the double battle thing that happened. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're talking about, like, oh. you're talking, I know, Cheryl and... Cheryl, Cheryl. Oh! oh. And Cheryl, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited Yes! Riley, Cheryl, all of them, because then they yes. can incorporate them even more. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. like, associate each of them with a legend. Buck. <gasps> because Buck's got Heatran. Yep. Make, like, hey, here, have him, have him come with you again. Or you Cheryl call them could up. have Shaman. She could. Yep. Yep. I'm excited. Like, like That's pair them up with a different legend. Make instead of making it like looker, make it with those. You go, t- you find this person and talk yeah. to them, and then you start a story. Stop you making me forward. want things that aren't going to happen, Shamu. <laughs> I know. Well, well, here at the very least, you'll get the initial one again, hopefully, and that's all I really want. I mean, that's going to be good too. I agree with that. Give me more Cheryl. More Cheryl. We need more Cheryl. You can get her as a card now. It's actually a good card, right? That we talked about on TCG Cast. Yeah. That's broken with some stuff. <laughs> yeah, like my Corviknight deck that I want. Right, yeah. Do. No, we are. I, I love how we both, like, look at a. Like, we both find out we're into a certain card. Like, say, say uh-huh. the Azor, and we're both interested in the Corviknight Bronzong thing. Heck yeah, that's so lit. All right. We have one more email today. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be from a Sloking Braveheart. All right. Hello, glorious trainer Thatch and fabulous co-host Slow King Braveheart checking in again to thank you for all the amazing work you have been doing keeping up with the current trends in the Pokemon Gen 8 meta and all the coverage of the two amazing games most of us are super excited about with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and more importantly, Pokemon Legends Arceus. I have started my own journey to celebrate Pokemon 25. Since the last time I wrote in, I have bought a 2DS and I am playing through the entire Pokemon series with po- starting with Pokemon Red in a custom Nuzlocke. 2D, I hope it's a new 2DS and not like the old 2DS. The new 2DS is better. <laughs> For Pokemon Red, my Nuzlocke has followed normal Nuzlocke rules. However, once I received the infamous Helix fossil, I created the new rule that I could keep fainted po- members of my core team with me if I was able to make a sacrifice to Lord Helix. What? 
So every time my core team would faint, I would go release three Pokemon to make up for their death in tribute to Lord Helix. What? <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Despite words of caution from Professor Oak, I would use the Helix fossil three times before <laughs> using the Pokemon Center and reviving my fallen team members. <laughs> I I like that more than I should. That's hilarious, because with Nuzlocke, you only yeah. have so many Pokemon. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's so good. <laughs> this system will probably end after Generation 1, but as, of, as I'm writing this email, my current team is working through Sabrina's gym after liberating Sylphco from Team Rocket. My current team is as follows, Charles the Charizard, Burgesus the Pidgeot, Calypso the Gyarados, Reina the Nidoqueen, Bolt the Raichu, and Kush the Vileplume, who is replaced by Drogon the Dratini. <laughs> oh, we got a Dratini? Oh my god. Well, you can buy it by that point. Oh, that's true. Right. You, you can, can buy, buy it by buy that it. point. Yeah. I thought I actually caught it. I was like, oh. <laughs> In a Nuzlocke? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's... My goal is to hopefully have a strong team of dragons by the time I challenge Lance and the Elite Four, but I'll keep you all updated on my progress since grinding in Pokemon Red is by far one of the most grueling processes. I'm more excited that... Uh, more than excited as we, as Pokemon fans, finally get an open world Pokemon game in Legends Arceus. Whoa, slow down. <laughs> I'm sure they'll find a way to ruin the open world aspect for us. There's still time. I've known TPCI enough to know that they can do it. <laughs> I'm really hoping we see more news from Pokemon and that they continue to remake old games. Maybe by bringing in more third party developers. But let's see how, oh, that's not, it's not called Ilka. It's, it's Ilka, not Ilko does first. I could keep rambling for hours, but the Elite Four calls and the winds of Johto call my name next. Thank you all again for all you do and the amazing community you have built. Catch you on the flip-flop, Slowking Braveheart. You know what you thought of with the Ilka thing? Watch them really not be able to make connectivity to their own, to, like, their own program. <laughs> oh, they're totally gonna hook up to it. They're totally hooking I, up to I know, they have to. They have to. They designed it. They have to. But I'm just waiting for them to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> like... That's the first thing I thought, like, oh, wow, they're going to mess this up somehow. I just want yeah, to know how. Yeah, absolutely. Accidentally, every Pokemon you transfer from there gets Hydro Pump. No, nah, they just get deleted. So thank <laughs> you to all of you for sending in emails. I I don't know. We had a lot of good discussion here today. Yeah, we've got Crowley. We've got, uh, we've got, it's either between Crowley and Academic J. I'd lead more towards Academic. I didn't, you, you more or less spun the, the different discussion off of the first one. Sure, sure, the sure. Email itself unfortunately sure yeah you know what that was mi that was my brain coming up with the academic j we got Woo! you you get the green Taurus badge this week make sure you ask us for it if your email didn't get read right on the show make sure you check out the youtube channel youtube.com slash buckle podcast we will be getting a, a extended mailbag out there now that thatch isn't dying from sinus infections yeah so yay so please check it out we've got so many emails here and a lot of them are good so i would definitely like to uh, share them all with you if you want to keep up with Puckle throughout the week, the best way to do so is go to our Discord server, which is, as always, in the show notes. You can always check out Puckle Plus. Um, I think Battlecast just came out this week, so you can definitely check out Battlecast with uh, myself and Seth on it. Woo! It was a good time. I, I enjoyed it. I think TCG Cast comes out this Thursday? TCG, yes, let's say that. Yeah. I know they're talking about battle styles. That's what I know. Yeah. <laughs> they're recording today. Yeah. Check out Puckle Podcast. You Puckle Plus. Corp Knight and uh, Bronzong share yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely, I, I helped build the list for the cards for that, so I'm kind of aware of what they're talking Ooh, about we'll already. We'll have to compare lists. We'll have to compare them. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't have a list for that. I was talking about the, oh, what they're oh, talking okay, about. Yeah. And then be sure you can uh, keep up with Puckle throughout the week over on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and uh, what's the other one? Instagram. That's the one. Instagram. It, Instagram. It, it's a really good time. And yeah, I definitely recommend it one thousand uh, percent to just follow us, mostly on Twitter, <laughs> we where we where we do things. But you can also follow us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast, where myself I stream on Tuesdays, and P Mickey slash Claude and I and are streaming on Thursdays. It's uh, it's a hoot and a holler. It's a good time. And then we're also gonna go ahead and have YouTube videos again with the Puckle Plays Soul Silver coming up very soon. And we also have uh, extended mailbag as well as Pokemon of the episode videos over there as well. YouTube.com slash Puckle Podcast. Finally, if you want to support the show, a great way to do so is either go to Twitch, drop a Twitch Prime subscription that you get for free just for being on Amazon Prime. Or you could support us over at Patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast where you get free Pokemon giveaways, access to the Breeder Bot, and all that other fun stuff. Uh, with that said, 
that's everything here. I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been Shamu. And I have been Seth Vitler. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.